guys, um, today I'm going to be doing a quick commentary response video on some of this, um, just don't have a lot of time today, um, yeah, um, Amanda did incredibly well, um, during this episode, it was incredible, um, watching her sort of debate, um, with Corey Anton, um, wow, <laughs> She's like, she's as good at debating as Amendum, but she's way calmer, <laughs> which is like nice. Um, but yeah, um, it was an interesting video. Um, Corey Anton seems to take a very strange position on um, antinatalism. <laughs> um, similar to a couple of my friends, um, it's just very kind of like wishy-washy, it's like a very soft anti-natalist, um, but it's interesting, great episode. In the development of the antinatalist community between the years of 2010 through around 2015, which was really the first true antinatalist community. I would and, and, and have argued. Um, you were an extremely active and extremely valuable participant on the other side of the argument, arguing against antinatalism. And you had some hot takes back, back then, and we'll talk about those soon enough. Um, I mean, we'll also talk uh, a little bit about. At least in his arguments with um, in Mendham, he was just arguing that life's ambiguous. That's his main argument. Your, I hope your most recent book, How Non-Being Haunts Being. Um, but one of the biggest points I want to make by having this interview today is to say that you represent not only an important piece of early antinatalist internet history, but a piece of what the movement has, in my opinion, lost, and a piece that it sorely needs. And that's really engaging pushback you know, from the other side of, of the argument. Uh, we, we, we had that from you and fr uh, from others back in the day in a really big way, and, and I'm grateful for every bit of it. But I also want to make the point that this is a big thing that I think the media itself has lost, you know, once the, the, the response video culture kind of died. Philosophical yeah. debate on YouTube yeah. um, really suffered as a result of that. It just, it just isn't what it used to be. Um, so I'm excited to remember, you know, all those times with you today. Yeah, philosophical debate these days is uh, libs of TikTok. And uh, Steve Godfrey doing the same thing as lips of TikTok. Um, I'm so excited to, to speak with you about so many things today. Um, but before we get into it, just the most basic of questions first. Who is Professor Corey Anton? Oh, good grief. That's too much. I don't know about any kind of questions like that. I, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm a professor at Grand Valley. I've been a professor here since 98. I have degrees in psychology and communication and philosophy so I'm, I'm a little bit multidisciplinary in that sense i'm i'm somewhat homeless i'm a little too philosophical for some of my calm colleagues i'm not philosophical enough for some of my you know philosophers i'm i'm and i, I like a lot of interdisciplinary stuff so i'm i'm in that sense not really easily easily camped i guess I, I would rather, I, I mean, I just want to maybe open by saying I'm not sure if there's a, a a tight correspondence between how I see myself related to antinatalism and how I heard it just sort of being depicted. Because I don't think of myself as on the other side of antinatalism. I think of things like pro-life, people who are pro-life, to me, are the people who are both most anti-antinatalist. Anti and like the, the people who carry the pro-life you know position and i think a lot of those people they're not even interested in willing and to discuss it with the antinatalist so in some you know in, in that sense i i would more characterize myself as someone who's taken antinatalism quite seriously and i do believe that for those who are pro-lifers Anti-natalism is an absolutely crucial dialogue to get into. That people. Who oh are hell yeah! Like, you know, so it's it's where you're. It's the most important people to talk to. 
stand on the spectrum. I mean, again, to me, who's someone who's a pro-lifer, there I'm more inclined to bring out the virtues, the arguments that need to be heard from the antinatalist camp. But I would describe myself as not an antinatalist, but I'm not necessarily maybe against antinatalism in the way that I am against pro-life. So if I, if I say I'm against the pro-life <sighs> argument, but I'm not like against the anti-natalist argument in the same way it's to a lesser extent and it has to do for all kinds of reasons um i mean i think very soft anti-natalist incredibly soft and that's not necessarily a bad thing like he represents a portion of the culture which he talks about later on which is changing into an anti-natalist direction so it's like I don't, I don't know. I can't how he can't even see that, but <laughs> okay. So yeah, I mean, I think that would be the first thing I'd want to say that there's a bunch of religious dogma, and I, I th there's no religious dogma in antinatalism. I think unwanted pregnancies are something that's really horrible. Oh. It's horrible for the person who's enduring it. It's also horrible for the person who has been brought into the world basically unwanted. I mean, I, I grew up, as, I was adopted, okay, and I was adopted at five weeks, and I think it's a great risk. You know, my biological mother, you know, she risked bringing me into existence, and she kind of put me in a basket, a, a, I guess a well-taken-care-of basket, but a basket pushed me up a river. It was a closed adoption case. It was meant out of love and care, and I think from her perspective, she did it for you know, for many reasons. Now, what Corey Anton here is saying um, seems very similar to like um, the things that like ChatGPT um, have said. I've been debating with uh, ChatGPT about antinatalism for a while. Um, I got to admit <laughs> that um, birth and rape are pretty damn close <laughs> um, in terms of what it is they're like virtually the same um got it to admit that took a while but i did it reasons you know it isn't just like adherence to religious dogma i think there is no other way to enter life short of having someone else make the decision for you and so this i mean so i mean i, I maybe i'll say just a couple more things and then maybe we can go back and forth but but i mean i think here would be where i would say <sighs> that there are two things that I'd want to say and get off right off the bat. The first that is, I don't believe that life is either good or bad. I think it's ambiguous. I think that we couldn't, yeah. even if we spent hours going at it, we couldn't give all of the good things and all of the bad things and then summatively go, okay, I dotted the I, crossed the T, what is it equal? It's not, somehow not able to be summed up as qualitatively just either good or bad it's somehow both. And I think part of the difficulty is that t different people can experience that ambiguity pessimistically or optimistically. Part of the difficulty of some of the early YouTube arguments that I was in is that people, they would often <clears throat> say something like this, that the reason someone can't see that life is futile suffering and there's no point to it is that they're in a defense mechanism clinging to life they already have like the sunk cost of an investment in their existence and now they can't critically think about it because that's too psychologically painful the problem with that argument the problem with that argument is that that's just as equally uh, applicable to anyone who gives the antinatalist position. Somebody accuses them of being a, a basement-dwelling troglodyte who's just bitter and sad that their own life has not amounted to that much. And so now they, thinking that they can speak for other people, even people who say, look, you don't understand what my life is like, they say, no, look, I'll tell you what your life has to be. Your life has to be adherence to the things that I say, which is life is crap. Or something like this. See, I think the pro so again, the, the first point would be that those who claim that uh, it's not being taken seriously are doing out of a psychological defense mechanism that equally applies to both positions and it washes. Now, here's where I think the antinatalist gets most difficult, and I'll stop with, with this statement right here. Oh, God, please. And that would be 
and I, maybe I want to get I want to get further up to get to where I'd like us to go, where I think maybe we could meet minds about the right to die. To me, the the, the changing the the right to die is important. It is important to change the culture around the right to die. But again, with antinatalism, the right to die would be pointless because there'd be nobody around to need that right. There'd be there'd be nobody around to to say, "Oh gosh, I don't want to be here. Let me out peacefully." There'd be no one like that. So, <laughs> antinatalism. Prevention over cure. Culture with giving people the right to die may be the place where I could really come and go, all right, let's be buddies, we're on the same page. But here would be where I would say antinatalism is deeply out of touch with most people's sensibilities. And it's easy to demonstrate. If I say we we have a simple example and all the information we have is we have there was an old person, 80 years old, got killed in a car accident today. I say there was a young person, a five-year-old, got killed in a car accident today. We don't know anything about these people. Most people are going to hear that and they're going to go, the death of the five-year-old is more tragic, more painful, and more of a loss. If, on the other hand, they were to say, phew! Thank God that five-year-old got killed right there because there just would have been nothing but a life of suffering and loss and pain and hardship. So it really was better off. It would have been a better thing for the five-year-old to have died than the eight-year-old. When that happens, when people's spontaneous reaction is, yes, <laughs> it's preferable to have a five-year-old get hit in the car accident than an eight-year-old, then I'll think, antinatalism is at least closely aligned with what would be called common sense and would have like promise but until then it's just not going to resonate it's too tough of a sell well i don't think that's really what antinatalism would be saying though in that in either no. circumstance it's not that the 80 year old was better off dead or the five-year-old was better off dead it's that both were better never to have existed in the first place yep that the decision for yep. them should never have been made in the first place well, I mean, my, I, I would disagree, and I would say that you're you're right in a philosophical way, but the point of this whole argument is about the moral imperative not to procreate. Well, but I, I think that breaks, brings me right back to what I just said. I mean, it, it, the fact of the matter is, in procreating, you create circumstances in which yep. five-year-olds and 80-year-olds die. Oh, Amanda, that's not right, because... What you're saying is that the reason you're claiming no, it's you right. have the moral imperative not to procreate is because there's more suffering than benefit. But the fact that people... It doesn't even have to be more suffering than benefit. It's just the benefit does not outweigh the suffering. You're paying more than you're getting. <laughs> like you're paying more than the pleasure is worth in pain. That's all. It's, it's, it's not... Ugh. Sensibilities are so different show that your argument seems deeply misinformed or at least out of alignment with other people. And if you say, well, they're just psychologically rational... You're not getting out what you're putting in. Make sense? It's like you're putting in two units of pain getting back one of pleasure. Like, it's just, it's never... It's a zero-sum game. How have you not learned this from Amendment yet? Analyzing? <laughs> no, I just showed that that's not the move you can make. Well, I, I don't, I, I don't know that I make that argument that they're psychologically rationalizing. I don't think most people have thought about this subject to begin with. It's yep. information that people generally haven't been haven't been presented with. Sure. So no, we live in a very pronatalist, fucking pro-lifer society. You no, know, I think part that's part of the point I've I've been trying to make at the very beginning is that. This whole conversation, despite the fact that antinatalism is an ancient idea, it's been with us in one form or another since antiquity, it's really only been uh, since 2006 that this is even a word. <laughs> and it's not a word that's even in the English dictionary yet. So people have not been confronted with these um, these ideas for very long, particularly. I don't know if they're, see, to, to say that it's always been here, but there hasn't been a word for it. I mean, I think we could say that that's true, but also not true. I think in some cultures, they had a different sense. They had a notion that a child wasn't part of the culture until the parents, the person who had given birth to it, had decided whether or not it was a cultural member. And so exposing babies was a practice. Up until the rise of the state, people could 
sell their children to slavery. They could beat their kids senseless. You could kill your kid. It was your right. I mean, and that, it, so that's one of these, you know, like, like the ways that libertarianism gets misrepresented as sort of like the individual against the collective. In some way, like the government and the collective, particularly the uh, governmental agencies, they were like a rallying powerpoint between the tyranny of the family and the individual do you know what i mean but uh, that, that's neither here nor there i guess what i'm just yeah. trying to say is that what, what i would like to hear is how exactly if if it's true that if we just pull your average person not you or other antinatalists but if we just go on the street and vote and people have never heard of antinatalism and we give them the story an 80 year we don't know any other facts about the people but just all we know is it's an 80 year old person and it's a five year old which is the more tragic death i think most people yeah yeah that's I think also that, not the subject yeah exactly antinatalism is about <laughs> Well, it's, it's essential to your argument because the argument of antinatalism is that in order to give the warrant not to procreate, you have to show that life itself is not worth living and not worth continuing. No, you don't. <laughs> um, any addiction can be worth continuing to the person who's addicted. It doesn't mean you go and create more addicts. Like, this is simple. Well, but it's about but 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 the, but the not continuing part. Yep, the is not continuing. Important, yes, but it's, it's not it antinatalism. Has to begin with whether you create the life in the first place. That's the question. Yep. So it's not that it's not which is more tragic, and what the common what man on the street's it? opinion of that would be. Mm -hmm. It's like, whether what? you start circumstances to begin with. It's what you whether you it's whether you it is right for you to create need for no need. Whether it's right for you to create a circumstance in in which a person would have to make a decision whether it's worth it or not. I mean, we'll talk about about this more later. But I mean, you you know, in some of your older videos, you talk a lot about how, um, you know, by 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 putting antinatalism out in the world, you're taking the choice away from somebody who would have existed. And it should be that person's choice to decide whether life is an imposition or not. But I mean, you know, you, you can't leave that to like for well, when the person yeah, still, yeah. you know, is, is actually in existence already. I think though you're, you're not, why do you think, I mean, just why do you seem unwilling to just answer that very simple question? Because it's a stupid question. Well, what, what which would be more tragic? Yeah. No, no, no. Not, I'm not saying what do you think is more tragic. As an antinatalist, you of course think it's more tragic that anyone's existing. That there's no way to compare it. It's just all equally somehow. So you're appealing to the fact that the average person is fucking retarded. Oh, that's a brilliant argument. Oh, horrible. Yeah. I think that doesn't make any sense. See, like, this is why. Um media studies like understanding media um argumentation and data are very important things that we should be taught as early as fucking possible why doesn't it make and then the average person can actually make better fucking decisions maybe why doesn't it make any sense because that, that's that's the core that's to me, anyway, that's the core of the subject. Yep. If all lives are equally bad. That all it's that that all procreation <laughs> puts, I mean, that all procreation kidding. unnecessarily puts sentient creatures in harm's way. Amanda, fucking nailing it. <laughs> it's just like she's just not leaving it like fucking perfect. It's perfect. That's. I that is, that is a risk. Yeah. Right. I mean, and you're. And he's confused by this. Doing so without consent. And you're, you're creating an imposition the, 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 on that living thing. Give consent. I mean, using the word consent is like. Do you do you believe? No, no. But but the you nature said, of consent is that if you can't doing, get it, you shouldn't impose it. Yep. When you say you're doing it without consent, you're introducing a category mistake because you're making it seem like there's a person there who could give nope. it. Doesn't matter. I'm saying that because there is. Well, do you believe in a year from now? Will there be a 2024? Will there be? I guess I'm acting as if there will be. I, so there I will be new people there. People that are not even conceived yet will exist in 2024. Yep. So we can't get their consent. It's an impossibility. Then why would we take it? If you can't get 
a consent to have sex with somebody because they're asleep or they're, they're yep. you know, then you don't do it. Yep. You just don't do it. The nature of consent, <sighs> if you can't get it, then you oh, don't Lord. impose it. Someone who's so alive. Like, how, how, how is this hard for you, Corey? Like, I just don't get it. I just don't get how this is hard for people. Like, if you're the representation, and you kind of do seem like the representation of, like, average person, like, it's it might just be an intelligence thing. Like, I just don't think you can wrap your head around it. I just don't know if the average person can actually wrap their head around this. It might be impossible for them. Live and asleep, that's someone who's there who you can fail to get. It's like, I'm willing to, to even say that, like, Corey is putting on a complete act here, and he's just acting like the, the average person might take antinatalism or, like, the conversation for, like, the first time. Because it really seems like that. You know? Or maybe he really does believe it's, like, all just ambiguous bullshit get consent from because they potentially if awake could give consent but but you, but but you, you don't, don't take that consent people. unless you have there it explicitly there right? may be yeah. some people who after they've come into being they look at their parents and go although i couldn't have given consent i'm glad i did and i now give it to you what well, do you say that's that? tr well that's true but how many yeah. people are, is 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 that the per for every person that is to give their consent after the fact how many people yeah. are we dragging along that would say yes it was an imposition yeah you're essentially saying it's like well it's up to the to the rape victim to decide if the rape was uh okay or not rape is rape man it it, it it's, it's not an excuse to to impose um your will over someone else just because oh well maybe there's a good chance they'll forgive me and consent to it after the fact after I've raped them. That's not a good argument. That's not a convincing argument. So you can't have you can't have all of these good lives without also it costing all of this bad. Now I know for a fact, based on quotes from your videos, that you believe that it's it's one very, very difficult to imagine life existing without the cost, but you think that it's a cost worth paying. And I don't. That's what the answer. Yeah, yeah. Neither do I. I'm with Amanda on this one. Today, list is saying it is not worth the cost. It is not worth the expense of all of these bad experiences to start life. But what you're doing is you're basically saying that those people who first they there's no way to get into existence without some other person making that decision for you right. without consent. Right. There's no to happen right, that, right. None, none of us choose to come into existence right another person makes a choice they make that choice because their sense is that their life has been more good than bad now you could give no you could you think, and we could give all kinds of reasons there are some people who do they they get unwanted, you know they have an un, uh, intended unwanted pregnancy there's religious dogma there's fear there's all kinds of other things that go on there but i think to say that the only people who have children are those people who are just willingly taking risks for others i think well, no what? well no they're ignorantly willingly taking risks for others like i really don't think they really understand the implications of it it's it's literally like someone pushing someone on a highway saying, "Well, I wasn't driving the car that killed them, so how could I be responsible?" It's literally the same. I don't know what else you would call the it. The responsibility of trying to give another person experiences that they have cherished so. Much. Yeah, they can do that with people who already exist. I mean, like you can share a sunset with someone. <laughs> Fuck sakes. You don't have to create them to share that experience. They already exist, Corey. Much that they want, they they know that they will they know that they will die, and they think they can. Yeah, and it's just this whole like, I want my kid to live the same life I'm gonna live. <laughs> oh fuck! Hey, Dad, how'd that work out for you? <laughs> I'm trans and I'm antinatalist. Not the same life. Not the same experiences. Not even close. Um, 
counterfeit on someone who couldn't speak on their own behalf. And then they're trusting, and maybe this is an founder trust, but you'd have to address this question. They're trusting that the person once born could say, I now am in a position to... The person once raped can now say, I am now in a position... Continue, Corey. To give you consent. To give you consent. So yeah, you rape. You started out raping me, and then it turned into not a rape. But it was a rape when it started. That's the point. The lack of consent. <sighs> Especially for something as, as you would say, ambiguous as life. You should probably err on the side of caution, not on the side of, yeah, let's do it. No matter how well off or prepared you think you are, caution would always be the better way to go. Not, yeah, let's do it. Let's gamble. It'll most likely work out in our favor. And this is where I go back to where we would... To me, the rational move is to talk about the right to die. Because you don't get in, you don't... Yeah, I mean, again, right to die is important, but it it doesn't fix the problem, right? Like, if you don't have people around going, ah, I need out of this fucking shit in the first place, then there's no one going around needing to get out of this shit, right? So antinatalism, kind of like prevents the need for the right to die. Um, a lot of us do recognize that the right to die is very fucking important, if, especially if we're going to be doing this stupid uh, life on earth thing for a little, a little, little while longer, which it appears to be. Then yeah, the right to die is super fucking important, but it has almost nothing to do with like not having kids. <laughs> it's like the result of having kids that we need the right to die. Not the result of not having kids that we, we need the right to die. Do you see what I'm saying? So, right to die is not antinatalists, is not antinatalist, but a lot of antinatalists do think it's very important. Don't get the choice of coming into existence. No one asks you. It has to be, quotes, imposed it's actually the decision has to be made by other people because you're not there to make it but i think that means that the one choice that every person upon legal adulthood should have is the right to die we should have institutions i i'm pretty sure amanda's gonna nail him here <laughs> we should have various whether it requires you know a, a statement of sanity and a letter and it's something like you have your friends and your family and you have several people whoever it is statement sign of off on sanity. it and you go somewhere and you say you know it's not goodbye cruel world it's like all right i've had what i've wanted i've experienced it and i'm out yeah but it's a little callous isn't it cory why yeah. why i mean i understand that you think that i mean i understand that a lot of people who procreate have really good intentions the road to hell is paved with really good intentions yep. I'm not doubting that those people have good intentions, but to say that it yep. isn't a risk, to say that it isn't imposition, and to say, to take, the, to take the need for meaning, the need for love, the need for family. This is a nail. This is a hammer. She's nailing you. <laughs> You're getting nailed, man. <laughs> and to impose need for no need just to have that, just to bring that into the world. I mean, what, I mean, an example of yourself, if you don't mind me saying, I mean, what, why, why wouldn't you give that to somebody already here? Why would you need to create a new being in order to... I personally would say there's a huge difference between something like... The, and, and see, this, this is where I, I feel like, it's sort of like this, the pro-lifer has the stick bent really over here. The anti-natalist has the stick bent over here. I'm sort of, it's like this. I, I know, you, you think it's two I extremes. Think, I think life is more ambiguous, <laughs> ambiguous than your position is advocating. You, you're making it seem like all said and done. <sighs> that smile, Amanda. Oh, you see that smile? 
the words used to describe it at their basal level have to have negative, pejorative, pessimistic undertones. It lurks with these sort of ways in which, and, and, and here's where I-, you, I really, no, Okay, you say that, Corey, but you're the one telling me that think, the need to create new life warrants the justification to create somebody who will then need to go and kill themselves. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you about the right to die, but why should you have the right to create somebody that will then be in need of suicide? <laughs> Don't you think that's a little bit... <sighs> Fucking perfect. <laughs> like, what, like, what could you possibly say? callous and glib in the face of what people go yeah, through in their lives? You're being callous and glib in your reluctance to address the question of why most people find the death of a five-year-old more tragic than the death of a 30-year-old. You're- Because most people are idiots and they think life is a gift. Most people are sheltered morons. Oh, I'm so worldly. I know things. Sure you do. Inability to come clean on that question tells us everything we need to know, Amanda. Most people are sheltered twats. I I, I don't think that that's the subject of antinatalism. I, I think that the death of five-year-olds is very, very, very tragic. I think that and like even um, like people in like um, tribal um, situations, like even they're somewhat sheltered from like a lot of real tough things. Um, just by like the uh, fact of that they're surrounded by a group of other intelligent beings and have built a camp with walls and spears or bows or whatever, you know. So it's, it, it's just constant, like it's just sheltered people not thinking. Literally, is what as uh, at least that's how I see it. It's just people who are so fucking sheltered. And don't think. The death of I think the death. I think that the people die sucks. I think you're wrong. Okay. So you think the 80 year old is more tragic? What, what What is your way of answering this question? I think it's obvious that the death of the five year old is more tragic because life is more than suffering. It's okay. more. Yeah, it's a it's a an addiction. Uh, some people enjoy their addictions more than others. Some people hate it. Some people, it's somewhere in the middle. Like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Like, what's your point? It doesn't mean you impose more addiction. Just like your your personal feelings of, of your addiction aren't a good metric for imposing more addiction. Imposing. Not given the choice. Imposing. I, I mean, this is this. If uh, look, I you know, I don't have a background in philosophy. I will say. I mean, you could literally say it's like, well, I'm not imposing rape on them. I'm just giving them the choice of whether they wanted it or not. <laughs> okay. Say that, but I mean, this is deprivationalism is not the, is not the subject of antinatalism. So you're just yeah. changing the goalposts. You're using a need machine where need isn't there, and there's this asymmetry that's an oversimplification of the complexity. It's not. It's much more ambiguous. You're not just a need machine. Rape is much more ambiguous. Basically, saying that you're something a lot other and more than that. Well, what is it? What 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 more are we? It's beauty. You're able to cry to music. You're able to cry to music. Oh my God, we we need to have people in the world so they can cry to music. I can't just experience that myself. I have to force somebody else to exist, live an entire fucking life, just for the experience of crying to music. You're a madman. You are a madman. Make a, a, a so what? contribution so to what? you. That's, I mean, you, I got meaning coming out of every pore, okay? I'm a toy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Collector. I do all kinds, I'm an artist. I do all kinds of crazy stuff, okay? I got, I got terrestrial meaning like you wouldn't believe, okay? So what? It sounds pretty good, <laughs> 
trivial. Well, you you have a very trivial attitude towards the suffering of existence. You yeah. have a very trivial attitude towards it. It's, 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 it's alive in every it's, single one of your videos on this subject. You think you read my uh, How non Bean Haunts Bean? You think I'm yeah. in trivial yeah. about the suffering? You of are. In <laughs> I, I love like, the unimpressed, like, yep. It's there too. That's great. Maybe I'll pick up a copy. When it comes to creating life and what and the cost of that life, you're you are you are glib as to what the cost of that is. Yeah. See again, you use the word cost. It's it's funny. I mean, the the words you're using are so interesting. Like. <laughs> Did you deserve any of this? No one deserves to be born. I mean, I I begin with Deserve Ambrose. has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Ambrose Bierce's Devil Dictionary, where birth is the first and direst of all disasters. Life is a lot of suffering, hardship. No, life so is. So why impose it? Why make more of it? People want to kill themselves at eighteen. Life is absolutely horrible. I and I agree. So yeah. why make more of it? Yeah. It's not just that. See, you're you're denying the ambiguity of it. You you acting like you can round well, it out. You think because there's people that enjoy being raped, it's okay to go around raping people. That's your argument. It's ambiguous. So throw caution to the wind, roll those dice, and just randomly do it. Just randomly toss people out into the fucking world. Just randomly rape people. That's literally what you're saying. Well, and this is what's frustrating. In position of a need machine. Well, and okay. I, I, I've never understood your argument for ambiguity. It's ambiguous. Yeah, no, it's because it's literally a fucking fallacy. It's an ambiguous argument. What do you mean? I mean, I, 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 I mean, I can name every rotten things that happens that befall sentient creatures, and you just label that as ambiguous. I've... Just give me a moment. It's around here somewhere. There you go. Using a double meaning or ambiguity of language to mislead or represent the truth. And he's just, it's like his whole argument is ambiguity. Oh, it's ambiguous. The whole thing, life is ambiguous. Your whole argument is a fallacy. Anyway. I've never understood that. I don't think it makes any sense. I think that yeah, you're it being doesn't. glib in underestimating how wondrous and... I think you're being glib in underestimating how wondrous and joyous and amazing rape can be for, like, the few people that do enjoy it. And deeply profound is the experience of being alive. And if you have, have purpose and real sense of relevance, many people... If you're a retard... Who doesn't think about anything? I'm happy. As long as I'm happy, I'm happy. That's all that matters. So I'm happy. Happy, happy, happy. People can endure an incredible amounts of suffering because I'm not denying that. Isn't of meaning. I'm not denying. But why do you? Why do we need people to endure that? Why does there need to be people to endure that? But a lot of but 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 for every person that can, you got a whole pile of people and that, that can't. And also, it's not just about people; it's about sentience, it's yep. about animals, it's about nature. This whole game that life is caught up in has a huge fucking price tag attached. Yeah. And you're saying that because we can enjoy all we'll the see. lovely things, we can love, we can have be uncles, we can be fathers, we can be all this stuff. That somehow, you know, name your price. Any price. Is, it, well, what you're true. saying to me is that any price tag you want to put on that. So long as it comes with all this good stuff, I find this for you to pay. Now you're totally changing. Antinatalism no. is philosophically respectably discussed by people like Benatar. Not some of this goober stuff that's coming out of nowhere, like what? life itself. It, that, that to me is just absurd. What argument do you think he's making? You don't think <laughs> that Benatar is a sentiocentric antinatalist? 
I think he's talking about humans who deliberate about the possibility of having children. I don't think he's advocating. I think he does um, use humans as more of an example. Um, but I do think he is sentiocentric. Just, again, he, humans are easier to talk to when you're using humans as an example because we're fucking nepotistic. Kating, like this at the level of animals. I don't think he's... Yes, he is. Well, maybe talking about spading and neutering. We're not talking about ending life. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, uh, David Benatar is not a red button he's not you know exactly i mean there's there's arguments to autonomy mixed in with all of that but yes he's an extinctionist i don't know how you wouldn't get that mm -hmm. an idea i mean there is non-extinctionist antinatalism that is also a fact but benatar yeah. is an extinctionist antinatalist i don't know what he would uh, you know, you know I'm, decide I'm not... to do or not necessarily but that's another conversation interesting that you can't probably have any arguments at all with pro-lifers I mean, you can have these guys. Why wouldn't of... I have? Why wouldn't I have a, be able to have arguments with a pro-lifer? I don't know. I think they would just disagree with so much of this. I mean, I, at least I'm willing. I welcome it. Yeah, I'm willing. I'm willing to agree that life is just a lot of hardship, a lot of loss, a lot of. I'd like to see um, pro-lifers attack antinatalism um, as hard as they're attacking trans people right now. That would be fucking incredible. Um, the only reason I say that is because every time a pro-lifer or like an anti-trans person like makes an argument, they basically shoot themselves in the foot, um, <laughs> because all the counter arguments to them are better. <laughs> so generally, it it helps push things in a positive direction when idiots say stupid things, because <laughs> then all the smart people come in and correct them suffering and it's a lot of human stupidity and cruelty so i would love to have like pro-lifers just attacking antinatalists it's not just the natural heart online of course hardships of the world the luck of the draw the, the the different forms of just ableism that some people are born with all this kind of stuff it's more that people through greed stupidity thoughtlessness they we've created horrifying prison systems we have weak mental health facilities we don't have respectable right to die orientations in our culture i mean i think there's a lot of ways in which what you're calling those hardships that would make it justifiable to tell someone they can't impose life at all because it's a risk i mean to say that it's a risk and then say that although some people may end up with a life quotes better than it being all bad so when you do the the, the measure you're going to put it on the weight and scale and there's this few little percentage of people who when the balance goes it was better than worse but for the bulk of people it's just argue about addicting someone to heroin Corey. just make that argument and that's what you're doing oh it's ambiguous it's ambiguous if i if i inject someone uh, with heroin after uh, for a month you know and get them all addicted it's ambiguous you know it's ambiguous you don't know. Maybe maybe they can get over it. And if they don't, then they can just, you know, have the right to die. Piss off. That's just a silly, 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 silly argument of a madman. It's all bad. And then you say, well, because they're... Well, well their, their heroin addiction probably isn't all bad. It's not, it's not all bad. Therefore, it's ambiguous. It's ambiguous. It's ambiguous because it's not all bad. <laughs> Just only a few people who had it good, then you can't risk for anyone at all. I think for a lot of people, again, they go, I don't care. I, I Because people can't, because I can't speak for myself and other people have to make the decision, a lot of people are going to go out and take the risk. And by the fact that most people still say... He's so frustrated and bothered by this. It's, like, not even funny. Just the idea of people telling people, it's like, hey, you know, it's, it's probably morally imperative that you, you don't force someone to exist or, you know, to have a heroin addiction when you can't get consent.
probably shouldn't do that. Oh no, it's ambiguous, man. Like, uh, they might they might like aspects of the the heroin addiction. Okay. Okay, buddy. All right. Let's just put this uh, padded jacket on, and there's a nice padded room over there for you. Madman. That the death of the five-year-old is more tragic than the death of the 80-year-old. Most people go, I guess my life was actually pretty good. Yeah, well, I, I mean... <laughs> Most people go, I guess my addiction actually wasn't that bad. You know, I miss heroin. <laughs> But I, 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 I'm glad I have my sex drive back. <laughs> what the fuck? I, 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 just, I just failed to see that how in the face... Most people would be saying that without any knowledge of antinatalism. I mean, if, they, if, if people have the, that argument yeah. in mind, maybe they would say, hey, maybe it wasn't a good idea to create the five-year-old in the first place. Yeah. And how exactly did that 80-year-old die? Did they have access to the right to die? Or did they die horribly? I mean, yeah. Let me ask you this, Corey. Would you? We don't have the right to die in most places in the world. It's not. It's non-existent. And and even not where much. we do, it's a constant battle. Let's take Canada for, for as an example yeah. right now. Um, would you put a moratorium on procreation until we do? Because right now we're cool. pumping out life like crazy, and there's no way out other than you know miserable circumstances. I mean, I prefer people such as yourself and other antinatalists to go out, stir trouble, create arguments, make people think about it. I think you should be advocating that people who are pro-life think about it. Not me, I'm not a pro-lifer. No, but, but Corey, you, <laughs> my reasons for, I mean, you've, you've you, I don't know. You, you've act, you have actively been. I mean, you and clearly this has been a topic on your mind for a long time. It did enter into how non being haunts being. I mean, you did revisit it after twelve years of talking about it on YouTube. So I was talking about death acceptance before your group was even touching all this stuff. I've been on death acceptance I since that. I was a teenager. I understand that. I, I don't understand where we're getting confused here. I mean, you, 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 you were, you were. I, I, I haven't said anything untrue. You were an active participant in this conversation for years. You had some idea in your head that from some other people. I'm not sure where it comes from. Go find my videos. I'm not a pro-lifer. My I never said you were. I never said you were. I've never yeah. called you a natalist. I've never called you a pro. But for some reason, you make these ridiculous pro-life arguments. Oh, it's ambiguous. It's ambiguous. You you say you're not a pro-lifer, but you seem to be defending life. More than you're than you're defending not having kids. So, a conclusion that I think most reasonable people watching you would reach is that you are definitely some weird fucking mix of antinatalist, very soft antinatalist, um, in circumstantially soft antinatalist, I might add, um, and in some, in, in, in a pro-lifer. That's sort of a conclusion that I think most reasonable people would reach watching you, is you have a very wishy-washy worldview. It's ambiguous. Pro-lifer? I've said that you're ability to have a non-antinatalist yep. conversation with antinatalists was valuable. That's all I've said. You're putting words in my mouth. Oh, Why can't you accept that? <laughs> I don't understand why we're getting angry at each other about this. You record, you're recording this right now. And we're yeah. going to have at the beginning telling people that's how you introduced me as someone who's anti-antinatalist. No, I, I, I did not call you anti-antinatalist. I don't think that at all no well, it's on the recording i right think you here. just have a very do, ambiguous do world no, no please don't do not remove this now well, well, I'm this not gonna remove, I, I didn't say i was going to remove anything I, I mean i can go back and read what i wrote i mean it, it was all pre-written like i'm saying i find the antinatal personally yeah i find the antinatalist position very useful when confronting someone who's a pro-lifer okay. that's what i thought we this discussion 
Okay, but I, but again, I never called you an anti antinatalist. I simply, oh, I did say that you were on the other side of the argument, and you were, you were on a different side of the argument. Okay, a different side of the argument. You he's were on an the anti-natalist. he's on the ambiguous no, side of the I argument. With it, but I disagree with it less. He's like than I somewhere in the middle pro-life. between pro life and anti natalist. I mean, I, 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 where are we getting confused here? If you have a, a comb with one tooth in it, there, there's a lot of fines of shaved grays in here. Ambiguity. Ambiguity. The ambiguity of the ambiguity of the ambiguity of the meta-science of the ambiguity. Ambiguity. The defense for life is ambiguity. All you have to do is claim, it's ambiguous and rape is okay. Corey, all I'm telling you is that your ability to have the conversation on a different side of the argument okay. than an antinatalist argument... He certainly is on a different side of this argument. ...was right. valuable. Like the dark side of the moon side of this argument. Well, no, I appreciate it. I think... <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wow! The stuff that you're doing, you know, again, to promote the... The thoughtless, pro- to me, thoughtless procreation, people who get googly-eyed when they think of babies, mm-hmm. people who do this sort of pan-gloss, oh. everything is rainbow and puppies. Now, my partner had a good joke. He said that, like, from my view, when I'm walking down the street, when I see um, a mother with a baby, I'm just like, uh, we gotta, we gotta homicide here we need to uh we need to get the police in on this uh oh, oh we got a a, a a murderer talking to a double murderer uh uh walking into a daycare we got we got a genocide going on in here it's kind of what it's like at least the way i see it it's just murderers talking to murderers genociders talking to genociders psychopaths talking to psychopaths But just because we say, look, it's not all rainbows and puppies, that doesn't mean it's nothing but a useless need machine. I mean, they, those, to me, are equally absurd. The well, person who say you, life you, is nothing... You bringing up rainbows and fresh, fresh-baked fresh bread, I remember that one from yeah, yeah. videos, in the face of real suffering in the world, I'm, I'm having exactly the same reaction. Yeah, it's, uh, as you know, my, my leg just got bitten off by a shark, and you're holding a piece of fucking fresh-baked bread in my face. I'm going to fucking tell you to go fuck yourself. And help me. <laughs> and uh, even like after all the healing and the trauma, like immediate trauma is done. If you come up and hold a fresh, fresh baked piece of bread in front of my face after uh, all of that, I'm still going to tell you don't make up for having my leg ripped off by a shark. Oh yeah, no, I'll totally do that for bread again. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, it smells so good. Let me cry over a song. Fuck off. I mean, you're telling me that I'm not appreciating the good stuff enough, but I'm, I'm, my critique is basically the same to you. You're not really yeah. taking the weight of the bad stuff enough. Can't you see? The, uh, here's the asymmetry in the argument: is that on my channel, I say it both ways. I have lots of videos about there is no happily ever after people, and I have a lot of videos that are basically talking about what does that mean and how are we to write, you know, fittingly respond to that. And uh-huh. it, it, it was very hard for me to have a channel because, in some way, on the theist atheist debate, I yeah. was too like, spiritual for any of the religious, you know, any of the atheist people. But right. I'm yeah, right. Right, I'm just, I know. I'm, I'm in between those areas. Yeah, so you're a witchy-washy, like, ambiguity worldview dude. That's... It's ambiguous. Yeah. No wonder it's hard. <laughs> no one's buying the bullshit. I get it, I get it. I, look, I'm, I'm not particularly categorizable either <laughs> in various ways, so I understand that. I mean, no. <laughs> like, it's really hard to categorize a lot of people. Um... Sort of the point of the whole trans movement at this point. <laughs> that is a struggle. Um, well, you're sort of categorizing yourself blanketly and in a ground level way as an anti-natalist. How long, how long have you known me, Corey? Have we been talking? I don't think you know much about how I categorize myself. I am an anti-natalist. I'm also many things. 
Okay, well, exactly. See, now, no, okay, that's an interesting comment. I think life can have a lot of different dimensions. Yes. And, mm -hmm. yes. yes. and that's where we hide the ambiguity. If you can find the ambiguity, you'd know what I'm talking about. But it's so well hidden in the dimensions of life that you'll never find it. <laughs> it's like, you gotta find the ambiguity. <laughs> Our experiences are very, very, very valued, very varied. But what the antinatalist is saying is that the suffering is what has the most weight. Yes. Would that be true? If that were true. If that were true. It is true. <laughs> There's real hard suffering, and your baked bread doesn't fucking do anything to make it better. It's just another dimension. After the fact. Yes, I would like to be born to have my leg ripped off by a shark so that I can then taste fresh baked bread and cry at a song. Gee, thanks mom and dad. Awesome. <laughs> like what? Like honestly, the dimension ambiguity is hiding in is the non-dimension. Because it's bullshit. Well, I don't think you've proved that, proven that it isn't. All you need to do, all you need to do, is get at least fifty percent of the population. Just fifty percent, of man. Get, get, make this your task. Make it so that when we ask oh, people blanketly, fifty percent way through this. Um, I think I'm going to end it. I got to get ready for work shortly. Um, we'll listen to a bit more of it, and I might do the rest of this when I get home or tomorrow. We'll see how much time I have. Um, yeah. Continue. If a 50-year-old or an 80-year-old and a 5-year-old get hit in a car accident and they die, which is the more tragic? Which is the worst? Yeah. I will have one when they can say that neither should have been brought into existence. Not whether, yeah. not which, not which, not which is the deprivation. Dodging. That's not the that's not the subject. Theory. Dodging the question. No. You're dodging You're the not understanding the subject. No. Yeah. She she didn't dodge the question. She answered it precisely. The answer to the question directly bears upon your claim that you No, it doesn't. All it bears upon is the claim that most people are sheltered fucking morons who view life as a gift. Every moment of life is a gift. Pain is a gift because you can learn from it. The this is a gift like that's a gift because it feels good. Like it it's all a gift to these fucking idiots. And they just don't fucking get it you have a legit and i'm not calling cory an idiot i'm just saying these idiots like super hardcore pro-lifers limit warrant to say don't pre appropriate because there's more hardship than there is benefit that's that's you have to be able to substantially demonstrate that life is somehow worse for, for that is it's better to have never been that is that there's more loss than there is gain if that's mm. true that, you need to prove that. Why, if that's true, is people's intuitive response to that question so out of alignment with what... So what, like, people's intuition is the way we should go? Like, people's, like, first, first, first thought response is what we should judge this thing on? Yeah, that's real ambiguous. That's just fucking retarded. But you're calling the truth here. Well, again, who, 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 very few people have been exposed to this. It is a difficult thing to understand. It does go against the grain of what people think about. Like, who, who's saying otherwise? I mean, obviously, if you get people together, they're not going to have an antenatalist perspective. Do you think I'm surprised by that? No. It goes, I'll follow that up. Do you actually believe that if everyone suddenly heard this broadcast or anyone, if suddenly everyone heard the argument of antinatalism, suddenly they would change how they'd answer that no. question? No. Honestly, I think if people actually, actually sat down and thought about it uh, after listening to this, they might. Uh, a large portion of people might. I think so. Honestly. Especially if they listen to Amendum for like fucking an hour or two. 
some of his fucking greatest hits. I think that would fucking really get them to change their minds. Of course not. Of course sh- not. It's it's a difficult thing to get people to understand. Okay, yeah. people haven't been at me. I'm tr- I also said to you at the beginning. I mean, honestly, that, like Corey, you barely understand it. That 2010 was the birth of the first anti-natalist community. We haven't been doing this very long. It's a very difficult argument to make to humanity. So I, I, I in no way think that it's magic words or that we're just on the horizon of winning. I think it's a Sisyphusian effort that yeah. some of us have taken on, but I think, but we've taken it on for really good yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess I, in that sense, I'm a comrade in arms that, you know, I've- Okay, great. I, I, I'm a, an allied to a robust, and again, for lack of a better word, I'm allied to a, a robust spirituality amidst full-on death acceptance. No happily ever after, no judgment, no miracles, no divine intervention, <laughs> but the same thing was just a fluke. That doesn't make any sense. To me, somehow, life's orderliness somehow wouldn't have been what it is without sentience emerging out of it. Like, sentience... I mean, I mean, it has sort of been more ordered with sentience, but it's still fucking chaos. It's not that much more ordered. Um, yeah. Anyway, I think I'm going to call it here for now. Uh, this is such a good um, discussion, uh, conversation, debate, argument, whatever you want to call it. Uh, podcast episode uh, one of the best um yeah um it's freaking great amanda you're doing awesome um keep it up um appreciate all you do for the community um yeah sorry it's been so long guys um just been busy feeling really weird um arguing with transphobes um yeah anyway see you guys later tonight or tomorrow something like that and uh have a day